video I'm going to show you how to calculate surface area. So really it's just working out area of all the surfaces, so the sides, in a 3D shape. So in the first one we've got a cube, so all the sides are identical, they're all square sides. To work out the area of one side, so say this face here for example, well it's just a square, so you just do base times height. So that will just work out the area of just this single face here. Well if we've got six sides all together, we need to multiply that answer by six. So three times three is nine, and nine times six is 54, and the units, because it's area, the surface area, is centimetres squared. So that's the answer to the first one. Now, here we've got a cuboid. So again, there are six sides, except this time they're all different sizes. So to start with, I'm just going to look at the end part here. So this, again, is a rectangle. So the area is the same. It's base times height for a rectangle, just like for a square. So I need to do three times four. And if you look closely, there's another one over here that's identical to that one. So there are two that are the same area. So I need to multiply that answer by two. Now I'm going to look at two of the other surfaces in this cuboid. So I'm going to look at the base this time. So it's another rectangle, except this time the dimensions are three and 10. So we're doing three times 10 to work out the area of that black rectangle. So just like before, there's another side that's identical to this one. It's the one that's opposite, so this one up here. So again, I'm going to multiply that answer by two. So to end, okay, make sure you add together all the surfaces. We've got to add on these sides here. So this one is the same as this one over here. I know it's getting a little bit difficult to see them all now, but there are two that are identical, which are opposite to each other. So to work out the area of this green one here, well, remember, it's a rectangle again, so it's base times height, so it's 10 times the height here is the same as the height here, so 4. So we've got 10 times 4. And again, we multiply by 2 because there are two sides that have that area. So now I've got 2, 4, 6 sides, so the 6 surfaces, so I need to add all those areas together. So we've got... 3 times 4, which is 12, and 12 times 2, which is 24. Then we've got 3 times 10, which is 30, and multiply that by 2 to get 60. And lastly, we've got 10 times 4, which is 40, times that by 2 to get 80, and then we can add them together. So if I add those together, I get 164, not forgetting the units for surface area, always squared. So the answer is in centimetres squared. Okay, so down here we've got a triangular prism. So this time we're going to be working out the surface area of rectangles, but also triangles. So remember, for the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So I'm going to start by just working out the area of that base. So hopefully you can see that that base is a rectangle. Imagine you're looking down from above. This is a rectangular shape. So to work out the area, you do base times height again. So the base is six and the height is two. So you do six times two. And there's only one surface that is that shape. So I don't times it by two, it's just the area of that one single rectangle. Okay, next I'm going to work out the area of these diagonal surfaces here. Okay, which are also rectangles. And see these dash parts here, these dashed lines. That means that these lines are all the same length. So if this rectangle is five by two, so is this one over here. So this one is identical to that other side. So to work out the area of this rectangle, again, it's base times height. So we're doing two times five. So remember, you're adding it on to what you've already worked out. And remember, there are two of them. So I need to times it by two this time. Okay, so finally, we've got the two triangular faces here and at the back. So again, they're identical in shape. So we're going to be multiplying that area by two. So let's just look at the first one. So we've got the area of a triangle, which is base times height divided by two. So we've got the base, which is six, 
the height, which is four, and then divide by two, not forgetting to multiply that area by two, because there are two triangles with that same area. So now we can work it out because we've covered all the surfaces in that triangular prism. So from the beginning, we've got six times two for that rectangular base, which is 12. Then we've got those slanting rectangular surfaces. So we've got two times five, which is 10, times that by two, which is 20. And then finally, those two triangular surfaces there at the front and the back. So 2 divided by 2, well they cancel each other out because 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. So if I add all those surfaces together, well I get 44, 54, so I get 56 centimetres squared for the surface area on this one. Okay, on to the final one. So this is a cylinder and we, we've got to work out the area of all the surfaces again. I can see two surfaces quite easily. I've got two circles there. And remember, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So you multiply pi by the radius squared. Well, the radius of this circle is, remember it's half of the diameter, so it's three, if the diameter is six. So you've got pi times three squared. So that's the area of one of the circles. Remember there are two, so you need to multiply the answer by two. So that's the two circles, okay? Now we've got to look at the curved part of the cylinder. Well, if we lay that curved part out flat, it's actually a rectangle. Now it might be a bit difficult to imagine that. So I'm just going to do a sketch of what the net of that cylinder would look like. So the net is just what these shapes would look like when they're laid out flat. So for a cylinder, it looks a bit strange, but it would look something like this. So they're the two circular ends that we just worked out. And now the curved part, if we lay it out flat, will look like this, so it's a rectangle. We know this height here is eight, because the difference between the two circles is eight, so it's still eight in this net shape here. Now, this length is the tricky part. Imagine this straight line, well, that should wrap around that circle completely. And the distance around the outside of a circle is what we call the circumference. So this length is actually the same as the circumference of that circle. And to work out circumference, well, circumference is pi times diameter. So for this one, you would do pi times six because the diameter of the circle is six. So now I've got the dimensions of this rectangle, I can work out the area. Remember, the area of a rectangle is base times height. So the base, which was the circumference, is pi times six. And the height of that rectangle is eight. So we've got the two circles plus that curved part, which happens to be a rectangle. So now I'm going to put that in the calculator because pi is likely to give me the decimal answer. So put that all in, so pi times three squared times by two plus six times eight, which is 207.345. And I'm going to round that to three significant figures. So that three doesn't round the seven up, so it's just 207 centimeters squared. So there you go, there's surface area. So as you can see, sometimes by drawing the net, it's a little bit easier to visualize all those surfaces of the 3D shape. So feel free to draw a sketch of the net before you work out all the shapes. Make sure you don't leave any areas out. Make sure you work out the area of every single surface, okay, in order to get full marks in the question. So there you go, surface area.